Hello, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is where we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news from around the world. Firstly, China's full-on and impressive construction of underground transit systems in cities all over the country may be easing. There have been reports funding has been pulled for some products, projects. If China is taking a more discriminating approach to infrastructure growth, it marks an about turn. The burgeoning public debt required for all of these systems will be behind the rethink. And staying in China, they are claiming stability and control of house prices, and to be sure there are some signs of that in the major cities. But prices are still rising fast in the next tier cities. On a month-on-month -month basis in October, residential prices for housing fell in nine of the 15 larger cities. But of the 70 large and medium-sized cities surveyed, prices in 50 of those rose on month-to-month -month compared with just 44 in September. And don't forget, these prices are all for leasehold situations. Homeowners never own the land in China. In the US, housing starts surged 14% on an annual basis to 1.3 million units. That was the highest level since October 2016, and also the second best reading in 10 years. September sales pace was revised up to 1.1 million units. In Australia, ASIC said it would look into the potential risks to shoppers from the boom in online buy now pay later platforms such as Afterpay. Consumer groups worry these services are scape laws designed to protect customers. Merchants are promoting these systems and strong growth in the peak Christmas shopping period is anticipated. The largest provider, Afterpay, does not charge interest, so it is not covered by credit, consumer credit laws. It makes about 80% of its revenue from fees charged to merchants and the remainder mainly from late payment fees from buyers caught by their impulses. Auction clearance rates have been high in Australia but they have been falling in the past four weeks. CoreLogic reports it was only 65.4% in the week that ended this weekend. That is down from about 80% a few months ago. And again in Australia, the RBA wants banks to push back against Visa and MasterCard who are grabbing most of the transactions for tap and go. And those come with high costs, payable by, payable by merchants to Visa and MasterCard, which is why many small businesses resist using the systems. The RBA has threatened regulation if the banks don't open up the option to use the low-cost FPOS system for contactless payments. In New York, the US Treasury 10-year yield is at 2.35%. And we should also report that the 510 inverted yield curve in China has disappeared and has gone back to a slightly positive curve. And the price of crude oil is up by more than a dollar today, now just over 56.50 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is just over 62.50 a barrel. And the price of gold is sharply higher, up $17 at $1,294 an ounce. However, the Kiwi dollar will start the week much lower. We're now at 68.2 US cents, and on the cross rates we're at 90.1 Aussie cents, and against the euro, 57.8 euro cents. That keeps the TWI at 71.1, which is in fact an 18-month low. And the roller coaster ride continues. Bitcoin is powered to yet another all-time high, currently trading at 8,026, having pushed up sharply in the last hour. I'm David Chaston. That was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.